Welcome back to the Marathon Mortgage Happy Hour. I'm Mike Wittek. I'm Rory Farrell. And today we're going to be discussing um, buying a rental property and using your rents for it. But that's, that's besides the point. We're going to be talking about the beer right now. More so. importantly. Special release hey. brewing 2SP company. 2SP <laughs> brewing company. Well, it says <laughs> Brewing 2SP Company. So, uh, the Anniversary Mango IPA. Yeah, I think you might like this one. It's a 5.8%. Uh, I guess technically it's more of like a sessionable IPA. But uh, it's their eighth anniversary, so congratulations to 2SP. They're down in Chester, uh, not far from um, the soccer stadium down there. And uh, they've been around for eight years, so let's give it a go. It's in Aston, Pennsylvania. And it says, everything we can't drink, we can. What does that mean? Like, we we can. Some everything drink. we can't drink everything like if they can't drink it in the in the brew house or in the uh in the tap room if they have too much then they can't oh, yeah get it out. Yep. a little play on words this is actually i think you might like this this is brewed with it um, smells it smells really good yeah fresh mango puree so after they get through the whole brewing process and um you know basically it's it's boiled and all that and they go into the fermentation process they add mango puree to it so it kind of gives it two things one is um it gives it sugar, so it kind of helps with the yeast. Um, gives it something to eat to create the alcohol and create the carbonation. It also obviously gives it the the flavor and the the nose with the mango. So, what do you think? Oh, that's why. Trying to play a drop here. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <sighs> yo, that's yo. That's a hold, hitter right there. Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold on a second. I thought I might have one for you today. That is the beer. That's the the, the best one we've ever done. 50-something episodes. <laughs> That's the beer. All right. Shout out to 2SP, this beer connoisseur. Yo, dude. Yo, 2SP, listen. Let me tell you something. You want to send us free beer? We'll drink you. We'll drink your beer for the next five to ten weeks i would drink your beer this from the first moment i sipped it i was shocked because i didn't realize it was going to be this good it's the fresh mango it's the sweetness yep. of it and but I it also has like the beer flavor oh man let me spill this Dude. but let's see and this is actually pretty old too at this point this was brewed in august of 2023 so this huh. if it tastes like that seven this is seven months old so if it for tastes like that send me cases uh, send me cases can you imagine how good that would have been in august fresh 2sp what do you want from us <laughs> you call me and let me know we'll figure it out i'm we'll sure they're getting on the horn right now they're we'll clamoring. shoot you shoot you a promo video and do whatever i don't know if you guys know us but we're a pretty big deal <laughs> in our we're office. charting yeah we're, we're charting ch in the mortgage slash beer yeah. podcast world so uh yeah whoa we might yeah. Be the number one podcast in beer and <laughs> beer and mortgages yeah if we're number two i'm gonna be pissed um <laughs> So anyway, with that being said, let's uh, get into the mortgage stuff. Dude, one or two sips of this, I feel a million times better today. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah feeling good. Know. All right, let's get into the mortgage stuff, the really exciting stuff. So um, when we are pre-qualifying someone to purchase a home, whether it's an investment or um, like a primary with a, a multi-unit where they're using rental income to offset the mortgage payment. No, um, no, not a primary with multiple units, just an investment. Why not? Because the primary, you're living in it. So you're already, you're saying you're gonna be living in it. Mm -hmm. The whole reason for the investments to be using the rental income of like their current place that they're renting or their mortgage, their current mortgage payment is because they don't want it to be reverse mortgage fraud. Like saying you're gonna use the rents to go in there, right? Is that what you're getting at? I guess, but it's still the same the same thing applies that we're talking about. Let's get into it. Maybe I'm wrong. So All right, this will yeah, be a learning experience it. in real time. Get into so it. So anytime you're using, you're needing the rental income mm -hmm. to qualify, mm -hmm. it gets a little tricky because you might be qualified to buy a $400,000 place that has $2,000 a month in rent or mm -hmm. a $400,000 place that only has $1,000 in rent. You may not qualify for that same place, even though it's the same sales price. Because you need the rent, correct? And if you only have a thousand dollars in rent yes. versus two thousand in rent. Yes. You might qualify for this one, but not for this one. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you're saying, yeah, yeah, you're saying, depending on how much rent you get, will help with your on the second amount. unit. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Is that where you were going with that? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. I'll just cut the part out where I look like an <laughs> asshole. Then. Um. That's fine. I good thing I edit these. Anyway. So. So you're this saying is, that's how much prep we do on these hold shows. On. So all you're saying is the more rent you get, the more you can qualify for a property. Well, yeah, clearly, yeah. but when, but when you're getting pre-approved, you don't know what the rent's going to be on that property because the property, you don't know what property it is. Correct. So if I'm qualifying, I'm one of my clients saying, Hey, you qualify for $350,000, mm-hmm. but it's contingent on rent of $2,000. Yeah. Month. I was going to say like, we, we always make sure we make our pre-qualifications contingent on those rents because it's important. Mm-hmm. Like, cause you don't know when you're going out shopping yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when, so that's like when we're doing a pre-approval or pre-qualification, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Cause we can say, Hey, you're, you're, you know, $350,000 pre-approval is great if you're getting $2,000 a month in rent on the second yeah. unit or a combination of the second and third unit, depending on how many units there are. So, um, that's where it gets a little tricky when you're putting those pre-approvals out there and you're saying, Hey, go find a, go find a place to buy. You know, you really have to be in communication with the buyer and also the realtor to make sure that they're showing them properties that is going to produce the amount of income you need on those other units. Yeah. So, um, I'm running into that right now where, this guy wants to be pre-qualified for X amount. I said, you can do that, but the, you know, the second or the third or the fourth units, whatever, you know, need to have a total of $3,000 in monthly rent. Mm -hmm. And that might be an unknown, you know, that might be that those other units currently aren't rented. So we don't really know until we get an appraisal. Yeah. Um, And that's where the realtor comes in where it's, Hey, I think that this could probably rent for X. I think this one could rent for X. So, um, true. Just gets a little dicey. And I'm running into it right now. So, yeah. And I think also, too, is did you want to touch on how I had originally thought we were touching on how if you're not renting a place or you don't have a primary residency payment? Yeah. When buying an investment property, you cannot use the rents from that investment property to qualify. That's not what I was going for, but that's valid. And I like this. Go ahead. I thought that's what you we were going to be talking about today. (laughs) Is we're, this not what we were, we're going to be talking? We're squishing two podcasts into to one podcast. Is this not what we were going to be talking about? We are now. Okay. All right. Cool. So, but just just to clarify, before we're downstairs, when we when we were like, "Hey, what are we going to talk about?" This is not it. That's not what I was thinking. Oh, okay. So we were thinking two different things. Okay. So anyway, what I was saying was when what I thought we were going to be discussing is when you're purchasing an investment property, it is important that if you're going to be using rents from that investment property to help you qualify you need to have a primary residency payment, whether it's a mortgage or you're paying rents, you need to have either a signed lease or a mortgage payment. Uh, so that way reverse mortgage fraud doesn't happen. That's their way of preventing it to yeah, show that you, you're- You ran into that recently. Ran into that a few times uh, where people say that they're renting and I'm like, okay, cool, 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 you're renting. But on reality, what they're doing is they're just like paying their mom money and whatever under the table there's under no the table and, no and to prove that trail. you're doing that it has to be really 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 specific you need to collect a lot of bank statements showing the whatever amount that you're paying your mom coming out every month on the same like almost the same time um so it, it gets really dicey so in that case you just want to make sure you have a lease uh for that person you know ran into it on my own properties uh you know so had that happen but with that being said I thought that's what we were going to be talking about. Yeah. So, well, yeah. you well, just got you go. a two for one here in the yeah. podcast. You're welcome. But Whoever I, makes it this far anyway, you're welcome. <laughs> this is unbelievable if you made it this far. Yeah, big big fans who are in into the sixth, seventh, eighth minute of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I think that kind of the overarching story of this is that it really is important to get on the phone with your clients, yep. ask all the right questions, ask follow-up questions. Mm-hmm. So many lenders these days are going towards these um, – just online applications or like, yeah, here's the link to my, my app or here's the, you know, here's the, um, you know, this online way of doing it that doesn't ask the follow-up questions, doesn't have the human element to it. So, yep. I mean, that person might say, hey, I rent and I put in 500 bucks a month in rent. But yep. if you don't ask, you know, are you on a lease or, you know, who, where does your rent go? Does it go to your mom? Okay, cool. Does she, you know, is there any paper trail of this? You know, there's so many situations where being on the phone live with somebody and asking the right questions saves you so many headaches down the line. And yeah. that might be too late at that point, you know, like you've given your deposit, you've done, you've paid for your appraisal, you've paid for your inspections, and then you run into this and underwriting, you're like, oh, shoot, I just put out all this money that I may or may not get back mm-hmm. because yeah. we didn't do the right thing the first time around. So, so nice. Work with the right real estate person, work with the right loan officer. 
Yeah. Communication. True. All right. Um, any wins? Yeah. I'll actually circle back to the win that I mentioned in the previous podcast that didn't get released because we had technical difficulties. So same win as last time. Uh, I got a buddy who is buying a property closing tomorrow or Wednesday. Okay. okay. I forget. Um, unique situation with the appraisal. The appraisal, um, like the home's second bathroom wasn't fully finished. Yep. Typically an issue with an appraiser. Um, we have a lot of contacts out there with different lenders that um, are not Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac um, lenders. They lend their own money, so kind of can like look at things in a more common sense way. I just got the email I was waiting for. Sorry. I'm so sorry I was listening, but thank God. You weren't listening, but that's fine. I was listening. Dude, listen. you were talking about like lenders that work in a less conventional way and more common sense. And yeah, you're there you go. On, yeah, come on, dude. So we got it figured out, and quite honestly, there was probably not a, le- a lot of lenders out there that would have figured that out and got it done smoothly the listing agent was like just so psyched that we were able to kind of do it this way and and not jump through a bunch of hoops not have to have the bathroom finished ahead of time not have to hold anybody in escrow that's Um, what we do son got a great rate smooth process first time home buyer settling on wednesday and he's i mean he's stoked so killer what about you uh what's my win so i guess my win for last week with the technical difficulty episode, Rory <laughs> spilled beer all over the <laughs> recording device, and it was a mess. So. Exactly. What um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, first off, scored my first try in rugby. Cool, Congrats. cool feeling. Yes, took all the pain away from playing the game all day. Um, and then uh, my my finance win. That was my personal win. My my financial mortgage related win would probably be um. Uh, last week, settled on a loan for a client. It was a cash out refinance. It wasn't the Typically, a cash out refinance right now, it's like, whoa, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. This saved these people so much money with debt consolidation. Like, uh, they were spending thousands of dollars a month and, you know, really lifted a ton of weight off their shoulder and helped Mm -hmm. them get out from underneath that. Now they make one payment and it was a great rate and it's not credit card rates that are 30%. So it's cool. Worked out and happy for them. It sheds light on. There's, I mean, kind of like when I just read, you know, there's always people moving, even if it's not a great time to move for, you know, interest rates or, you know, home, home prices are through, mm-hmm. whatever the case is, but life happens, you know, yeah. sometimes you have to move. Sometimes you get divorced or you have another baby or you want to, you know, downsize, you know, it's not an end all be all rule that, Hey, you, people aren't moving. People aren't buying houses or selling houses. Same thing with rates. It's like rates are high, higher mm-hmm. than they have been over the past couple of years. But guess what? They're, you know, life happens. You might have $200,000 in credit cards. Yeah. There's and always, 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 always work out there. It's just, you know, do you want to dig to find it? Yeah. And I, it's funny because I overheard you speaking with the woman, and you're like, and we're paying this off, and we're paying this off. And she was just like, I could hear it. Oh, yeah. Voice, like, mind blown. So, yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, it's got to feel good. A little cash flow. And, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that they can't refinance to a better rate. A oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. So, so, all right. Cool beans. Happy Friday, man. Happy Friday. Congrats on the try. Thanks, brother. All right. See ya. All right. Peace. Yeah, that's true.